Good to see you. So, we all set up, mate. Fantastic. You're ready to go. We've got the Vice Chancellor for about 15 minutes. Yep. Stress the importance of entrepreneurship, what MAP has been able to do lately, and if you want something macro, so yep. what uh, is happening in Australia and the importance of entrepreneurship for the Australian economy and all those sorts of things. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I was going to bring up was instead of Masterclass 7, mm -hmm. do we maybe want to focus on the Masterclass by Stephen on the 4th of June? So this year it's only one selection panel who's got a very diverse range of skills. Um, and I think we should announce who's on that selection panel prior. Um, maybe on the, the Monday or the, the Friday. Maybe in the email that we send them. The Melbourne Accelerator Program was established in 2012 to raise the culture of entrepreneurship around the university and also Melbourne more generally. However, we quickly realised that if we wanted to raise that culture of entrepreneurship, we needed to support entrepreneurs of all abilities, not just the top startups on campus. And so MAP has evolved into an entrepreneurship program where there are two components to our program. We have a range of events and programs designed to upskill and connect aspiring entrepreneurs to broaden and deepen the talent pool so we can allow more startups into the second component of our program, which is the MAP Startup Accelerator. If awarded access into the MAP Startup Accelerator, you'll get $20,000 offer space at the University of Melbourne. You get mentoring from our elite range of mentors and we'll travel to Sydney and Silicon Valley to meet with other entrepreneurs and investors and government agencies to help you grow your startup. Tonight is the first step of the application process. We had applications closed last night at 11.59pm and tonight the MAP team is reviewing the applications. So the application process is threefold. The first is an online video submission of three minutes with an associated kind of form and a few questions that we ask. And then those who are successful tonight will go through to a pitch night. They'll pitch to a room full of our mentors for three minutes and there's no Q&A so it's quite brutal. And after that, if they're successful, they'll go through to a 15 minute selection interview with our panel. Hi, my name is John Durier and I'm one of the founders of Virtual Knot. Let me share with you a little bit about who we are and what we do. I would also like to show you firsthand how our services will add value for online retail businesses. We plan to do this by providing immersive virtual stores that convey a sense of presence, which we believe will more effectively connect products with customers. Here at Virtual Knot, we are passionate about helping. I don't think he's ready, so I'm gonna say no. I'm going to say yes, only because I don't. I, I feel that he needs to go forward in front of the panel. Like, why would, why would we do it? It's not well, accurate though. It's I, 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 After 10 years, we expect to reach $1 per kilogram, which will expand our market potential to $800 billion. I'm really looking for a tenacious team. A team that's really excited, enthusiastic to get in there and really solve a big problem. The $20,000 will enable us to conduct on-the-ground market research and feasibility analysis. I look for a few things in the applications. The first is that they're working on a problem worth solving. A lot of people, especially early stage entrepreneurs, are married to a solution, not necessarily a problem. But what I like to see are people working on real problems that are big problems. Uh, I like to see evidence that the team has committed themselves to actually finding a solution to that problem that people want. And that means going out and speaking to potential customers and understanding what they want and gaining customer insight. I'm looking for that one idea that's disruptive. It's set apart from all the rest and it keeps me on the edge of my seat. Um, if a business is able to show that they've acquired customers or paying users in the form of a customer or an institution, that is massive points in terms of their validation. Yes, no. Max? It's a no for me as well. It's too competitive. Yep. But do you think they should be given the opportunity to pitch? Yes. Yes for me. Yes for me as well. And it's pretty simple. When you see a good application video, it can be quite succinct and clear as to why we should pick them. Because they have gone out, they have spoken to customers and they're working on a big problem. For me, that's the best picture I've seen all night. 
in terms of the actual pitch, they were clear, succinct, they talked about what they needed to and they moved on when they needed to. Um, and I think it's like the way you're going to sell stuff in the future. Um, in terms of defensibility, I think there's ways they can get around that and if they create a network effect as well or if they, there's, few, there's strategies to combat that in the future. Um, we also like to make sure that the culture of the people applying is in line with our culture. We want people who are coachable, we want people who aren't arrogant, uh, and we want people who are willing to give back to our community because what we're trying to do is drive that culture of innovation and entrepreneurship here at the university. But over time it's become the wealthiest nation in the world because it has a stable system of rule of law, it has a stable system of government. There are few people in this world who want to go out and create something special. A lot of people are content with the status quo. A lot of people are content in working a nine to five job. And if that works for them, fantastic. But working with entrepreneurs who have a vision to create a new product and have the courage to put everything on the line to go ahead and build that product. Working with those types of people is inspiring. But I can see that we're playing a part in helping people achieve their goals and starting a new business, that's pretty, pretty cool. It's a great delight to see the Melbourne Accelerator Program doing such wonderful work and with such extraordinary students and staff and mentors. This is a great initiative and it says something about the future that so many people are excited about creating new companies, new ideas, new products and taking them to the world. I quit my job to start when we got into MAP. At the time I knew that was crazy but I didn't really understand what this meant. Only now do I know like it's been six months and I really have been tested and know what that actually means to keep going and not to just like go back to the thing that's safe. Uh, we need to think creatively. We need to think out of the box and imagination and creativity are just key to our future. We also need courage to act on it. And those two ingredients are what entrepreneurship is all about. This is a place for brave people to come to try something that isn't obvious, that isn't easy that will test you, that will prove whether you have what it takes and that's courage. So that's my perspective on what MAP is. So if you can't handle pitching to a room full of 30 people when you're expecting eight, then don't even bother applying to math. Uh, which allow them to pinpoint areas for improvement. Pitching is a vital skill for an entrepreneur, and if you can't pitch at pitch night, then with all the help that we've given you, um, well then there's not much more we can do to help you out. I mean, yeah, pretty confident. Um, I mean, there's some pretty intense competition. I saw these guys doing like virtual reality goggles. And I was like, holy shit, man, like, <laughs> that's next level. <laughs>